much uh, for joining in. Have a very good day. Vinay Jaising, the MD of Portfolio Management Services at JM Financial Now, is also joining in. J um, sorry, Vinay, your view for the markets in 2023 is the first half may be a difficult terrain to navigate for global equities. India is likely to outperform. What's the best way to play then this first half? Is it go long on domestic names, avoid the exports? Uh, tell us the six-month view first. Sure. Thanks for the opportunity. You know, first, the way we look at it, the India resurgence story, as you can see in the loan book growth of 17% uh, year on year, makes uh, the private banks and some public sector banks a must to own. So that's where we need to be overweight. And the second space where we need to be overweight is the Make in India story. Uh, Make in India story emanates from a couple of uh, spaces. One is speciality chemicals. The other is contract manufacturing. And the third is manufacturing, be it an auto or otherwise, wherein India is becoming a source for them and where we are earning dollars and the cost is in, in terms of rupees. So these are the two spaces where we would be overweight in the first half of the year. So just to take that forward, Vinay, you said uh, manufacturing, including autos, but uh, you just want to understand which are the pockets that you like. Because if you go through the data uh, with a fine tooth comb, you'll realize that a lot of pockets are actually seeing pressure. There's, of course, two wheelers that have not recovered yet. Uh, even in the larger guys, right? I mean, if you look at Maruti's numbers, for example, the last three months in November, they did about one and a half lakhs of retail sa of wholesale sales compared to they were uh, at about 1.8 lakhs in September. So month on month, it's actually a fall that they've seen. So where are you seeing pockets where there is, a, you know, a high degree of outperformance in autos? Sure. Thank you. So auto ancillaries, companies like Craftsman, uh, companies like Escorts, you know, which are going to become the tractor hub for uh, the world coming in from India. These are the two spaces where we are most excited about. Obviously, if you want to play the FMCG chain, Maruti, but, you know, Maruti for us is now uh, getting closer to fully valued. We do have it in our portfolio. Though. Okay, all right. Uh, Vinay, Vinay, I want to ask you about a couple of these chemical names. Gujarat, Floro and Sumitomo Chemicals, I think you're positive on both those two uh, names. Tell us more. Sure. So as far as Gujarat Pluro is concerned, you know, the story for us is pretty simple. There's been a change in management, focuses on the product which we like, which is the fluorine chain. And even in the fluorine chain, uh, it is in the speciality uh, chemical part of the fluorine chain. If you were to look at valuations for Gujarat Fluoro, they're trading at 25, 26 times one year forward as compared to its peers, which are trading at close to 40 times. So that makes it a favorite for us. Good earnings growth, uh, good product uh, profile, and good uh, exposure to uh, global markets. Looking at Sumitomo, again, it, it's part of our Make in India story, wherein the parent Sumitomo from Japan is getting it orders, uh, export orders coming in from US, and India is becoming a hub for production. Today, exports are counting for about under 20% of overall sales for Sumitomo. And that number, our analyst Sudarshan tells us, should go to as much as 40% in the next two to three years. Earnings visibility here, again, for us, is north of 25 to 30% year on year as far as bottom line is concerned, which is why we like Sumitomo as well. Mm. Uh, you said you like speciality chemicals as a make in India theme, right? Vinay? How that does is China right. reopening uh, change this or impact speciality chemicals? So, you know, a couple of things. Uh, first, we all are aware that, you know, the Make in India story is China plus one, uh, put in different words. So China opening will increase the demand for China and also there the product availability were not there for a couple of these specialty chemical companies that would improve. Uh, but the way we are looking at specialty chemicals, and you mentioned a couple of the names earlier, you know, I would add one arcane chemicals to that, is if the raw material is more so based in India, and you can avoid buying raw material for China, the story gets even better. So for us, reopening of China is more a demand growth story and better supply stocks. But we are not buying those uh, companies wherein there is any raw material or a large portion of raw material coming in from China. So it won't make an impact to us, but to the entire speciality chemical space, it would be a lot more positive. There's so much happening in defense, aerospace, railways, right? I mean, we were just hearing from Baba Kalyani as to how Bharat Forge has now finally secured a big artillery guns order in Europe. And of course, defense stocks back home have been on a tear as well, BEL, etc. Uh, do you still like these names or do you think that the best is over in terms of a stock price move? 
Sure. See, for us, uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm hopping on the Make in India story uh, and, you know, the previous speech you had from Baba Kalyani. India is also becoming a hub, if not uh, for uh, export market, at least for replacing what was coming into the rest of the country uh, for the defense. Uh, the company we like out here is Hindustan Aeronautics, uh, in the, uh, in, you know, in the airport space. Uh, what's very important out here is, you know, with Tejas, which them be doing so much of uh, maintenance uh, work for engines of a couple of Russian uh, uh, engines, which are, you know, coming up for renewal as far as India is concerned. That makes us very believe that the short-term story, which is the next two years earnings growth profile for companies like Hindustan Aeronautics is 10 to 12%. But as you move from 2024 onwards, exports would become a big pie for it. And the earnings trajectory could move from 10 to 12 to probably 14 to 15%. Okay, all right. Um, you know, Vinay, I want to ask you about the headline index. Everyone's talking about the Nifty being uh, expensive at around 22 times odd. What kind of an earnings growth are you factoring in, point number one? And do you believe, are you in the camp that believes we are expensive at current levels? What's the downside risk then? Sure. Uh, thank you, Nigel. Uh, it's a tricky question because, uh, you know, today, obviously, we are at an all-time high. That's one way of looking at it. Uh, the other way of looking at it is uh, we are about 100% premium to emerging market and about 50% premium to MSCI world. Uh, that makes us on a relative basis expensive, but as our earnings uh, trajectory has shown, uh, our resilience to earnings is pretty solid. And on a one-year basis, since the Indian markets have gone nowhere to 5 to 6%, and the currency has depreciated by about 8 to 10%, for a global investor, we've not made much money. So time value of money for the Indian market for a year, despite a growth of 15 to 16 percent as being zero. So on an absolute basis, we've lost uh, one year of value. Having said that, our earnings growth uh, we are seeing is 15 to 16 percent uh, forward CAGR from this year to 2023 to 2024. So we see the EPS of 810 uh, moving up to even 1,100 levels for F25. So if I were to talk to you one year forward, uh, Therein, you know, we would be looking at a rolling EPS of somewhere close to 1,050 to 1,060. If I use the average five-year multiple of 20, you know, a 21,000 index uh, on a base cases cannot be forgotten for next year. Uh, put the other way around on your second question on the bear case. If you use an, the same multiple of about 1,000, uh, earnings of about 1,060, and take a multiple of 16, you know, which was the last 10-year average, we can visit 17,000 levels. So next year for us would be, you know, more a trading zone of 17,000 to 21,000. But with the first half of the year being a lot more attractive when the world has so many headwinds. Vinay, thank you very much uh, for joining in. That's Vinay Jai Singh of JM Financial. Let's uh, get into a very short break on that note. We'll come back and get you a check on what dealing rooms are saying in our segment, D Street Chatter. We'll also tell you what you can buy today, sell tomorrow calls from our technical experts.